You know what I noticed? Dads love Robin Hood. Like my dad age friends, I mean, I'm a, I'm a dad now, but my, my other dad age friends, like, you know, a few steps ahead of me, love Robin Hood. I wanna talk about shorts versus longs, and I wanna talk about NVIDIA versus Bitcoin, and throwing in a little uh, back to the past on the whole GameStop, Robin Hood thing. So in starting there, starting, so I was talking with a friend, he was talking about how like the longs aren't going to win on the video. Like the shorts are going to win. Like it can't keep going up forever. Like there's no snow. It, they, that doesn't make sense for it to keep going up forever. The fundamentals aren't there, you know, and you get into the fundamentals of business and like how it all works and that stuff. So a short on it makes total sense. A reasonable short on it makes total sense because it will hit. Okay. Yeah. And so there's that natural like longs versus shorts. And like, I would, I would still just be a natural long on this of like, I don't know, like, I feel like just everything's gonna go up. Like, everything measured in USD is gonna go up and fundamentals don't matter. Like, I'm definitely on the spectrum. Like, I'm I more towards that. So, because of that, back to when the whole, like, original GameStop, Robinhood thing happened and Wall Street bets on Reddit blew up and all this stuff. As a Bitcoiner and as someone who's, like, participated in, like, Bitcoin, Twitter, raw, raw community and watched Bitcoin videos on YouTube for 10 years now, like... I, I love that. Like, I love that, like that narrative of, hey, we have the info that this hedge fund is short GameStop and we know how to squeeze them if we all participate. And like that seed in that, like I just talked about the double benefit of owning Bitcoin. I'm kind of like the social effect of it and like the personal investment effect of it. That combined is my favorite thing. Like that's so exciting and so interesting. And that's, I think, what drove the GameStop Reddit story so much was the double benefit of this. Like you have your like investment position on that's like exciting and watching that go up is exciting. But then you have this narrative of like, I'm helping, like I'm part of one in a million, one in this like small army of people that are like our collective weight, our collective value and money is able to like be this elite institution or whatever, right? But when I'm, so I love that, I love that narrative. And I opened up my brokerage account and I was like, okay, I'm down, like I'll participate. Like I wanna join in and participate. But when I'm like scrolling the Reddit back then, and I was even like post this question, I think, but like trying to look around and I'm like, guys, what's the plan? Like, what's the end game? How does this end? Like, how do we actually beat them? Like, how do we actually get them to like cover their short and make it happen? Like. What's the actual end game? And like, because, wait, there's lots of, there was no answer. Like the short, the, the TLDR is like, there was no answer. Like no one was able to provide this like collective, like reasoned answer of like, this is when we win or this is the end game. And that's part of the reason why I believe a lot of like, kind of like populist short squeezes fizzle out is because there is, because of the structure of the way the stock market works and because of the like, entrenched advantages that large hedge funds and large players like have over the collective populace, you, there is no end game or the end game is very, very like hard to define and hard to rally towards because it's easy to see at top and it's easy to pull out. And that's why like things like that fizzle. And so I want to contrast that then like, with Bitcoin and like the, the Bitcoin short squeeze like is still on, like, and it's been on for 10 years and it's still on. And even then watching the quote unquote institutions, like bend the knee to Bitcoin and open up ETFs for Bitcoin while at the same time, individuals still being the self custody and like pull their Bitcoin from exchanges, pull your Bitcoin from exchanges, which you should learn to do by the way, like, because that's part of the whole, like the populist messaging of Bitcoin combined with the dollar short, like long Bitcoin dollar short is like the most populous driven investment with the most upside for the small individual with the most clearly defined way of continuing to make it happen, continuing to make it happen, continuing to make it happen. Because, and here's the reason, here's the reason. Because even people that don't believe in Bitcoin are still participating in the dollar short. 
That's why it's so powerful. Like the GameStop short, the only way to participate in the GameStop long to squeeze the shorts was to buy GameStop. There's no other way to like participate or back them up. The way you can participate and back up the dollar short is to buy a house and take out a mortgage, take a 0% credit card offer, learn what a home equity line of credit is and like use that to have a dollar short. Like there's so many ways to like quote unquote use debt correctly. Like there's so many personal fine, like you, that's all over YouTube. But like if you want to use like debt correctly and smartly, that's, that, that's freely available out there. So good. Okay. So the ability to, or owning commodities, like even owning the S and P 500, like owning the S and P 500 is a dollar short. Like you're owning a, um, money market, owning a money market fund is a dollar short, like opening up a 5% interest bearing wealth front account. That's like a money market under the hood and us treasuries under the hood is a dollar short. You're physically saying that holding this other investment is better than holding the base currency dollars. No one wants to hold base currency dollars. No one wants to hold base currency dollars. So regardless, if you believe what Bitcoiners say or care to own Bitcoin at all, you owning anything besides dollars and knowing inherently that checking accounts and cash is trash is you participating in the dollar short, that is fuel for the Bitcoin long. Because the Bitcoin Bitcoin has the most product market fit as a replacement for a global currency of anything available. People don't trust the other fiats. US is not gonna go and use another fiat. Like, or me as an individual, I'm not gonna go and use another fiat from another country or whatever. As small businesses in America, large businesses in America are not going to you like universally switch to a different fiat from a different country because why would we trust their central bank? Like if we're, if we're going to move on from central banks, we're moving on from all central banks. And that's what Bitcoin is saying. Okay. So the Bitcoin long summarizing all that, the Bitcoin long is still on when people even invest in other stuff, even people doing what they're doing with Nvidia right now is literal, like backing up the position that Bitcoin is better than the dollar because everything has been so financialized and so like blown out of the water in weird different ways that every single thing like that proves that Bitcoin has product market fit over the dollar and that the long is still on and the short squeeze of the dollar is still on. And because it's such a long-term thing and because Bitcoin trades 24 seven and because there's so many different entities that have gathered in to participate in from so many different angles and so many different perspectives um, over time, that's why like it has the most defined end game and the most ability to kind of like run the distance on actually like winning that populist end game that GameStop was trying to start.